Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. I am back. Got another five versus five for you today. I love these big team games because there's always a lot of stuff going on and I don't know. I like the camaraderie of team games and I like working together. I don't really particularly care for one versus one and two versus two, although I do participate in and cast those occasionally. This is what I love and hopefully this will be a good game that we can all enjoy together. Let's go ahead and introduce the teams and then we'll jump straight into the action. This is an average Joe's match. Uh, 900 to 1500 looks like the range which is smack dab in the middle of the skill set. We have Mr. Zion going cyber and air slot is occupied by a Zekio. I think that's how you pronounce that. He is taking Aeon, which is the normal choice. Then we've got Dumpling taking UEF on the right hand side. Die in my hands. Interesting. Taking Seraphim and Jukebox Hero, also Seraphim on the mid slots. Then on the southern side, we have Bulletproof Bob taking UEF, the appropriate faction for that name choice. Wet Cigarette taking Cybern. Tolaris using Seraphim to cover the left hand flank. We've got Slick on the right using UEF and then a Cybern Air player, Bulldog87. There is no Aeon on the southern team. All factions are represented on the northern team. The 5 versus 5 version of this map is kind of... I, the double mid here makes it a little bit difficult because there's not a whole lot of mechs to go around unless you get really creative with your distribution and a lot of times people... Uh, fight over which mechs to take and who gets what and it's good to go into this game with a plan as to who is going to take which mechs. That is something you need to discuss with your team beforehand for the two mid slots because inevitably one guy will get like five of these out here and then this guy will be stuck with two. So that is something to think about when you are prepping for this game. Let's see what's going on here. We've got a land scout heading up towards the front that is going to chillax right here on the plateau, providing a little bit of radar coverage for all of these guys. Then we've got extended land factories out here. This is always useful to get your production up towards the front to lower the response time on your factories producing units. We've got a steady stream of units coming out for Slick. He is making use of those speedy mech marines fronted by scouts. And those are going to go looking for any errant engineers that they can possibly pick off. We do have land factory or air factories, excuse me, up for both teams. Mr. Zion is taking a unique approach and actually snagging the plateaus with these engineers. Typically the air player will go for that, but this air player is completely out of luck because both of his side players are making their own air and got all of the plateaus. Now that I'm looking at it, this is a 900 player, not to hate on his skill level, but these guys probably just assumed that they had a weak air player without really asking about it and went ahead and did their own air builds just to cover their bases. So I can understand that, but it kind of makes for a unique play experience. We're going to see something a little lopsided here today because we're not going to have overpowered air. We're going to have overpowered sides on the north. On the southern side, Looks like nobody is expanding to take the plateaus. We do have a bomber hooking around the right that is from Dumpling. Maybe he can... Actually, I do know why he sent that there. He is waiting to pick off any engineers that were dropped on these plateaus. But there were none. So that is not a concern. Strictly interceptors being produced over there for now. We do have some units stacking up in the middle. There is so much reclaim on this map. You can see all the rocks out here tons in the middle there were some near the bases until they were already reclaimed just lots and lots to do reclaim wise jester ahoy mr zion has decided to go take this expansion with a jester and that is actually a drop from the left hand side Talaris. so much air involvement from all of the guys in this game i'm finding this a little hard to believe that in an average joe's rank the air was this strong that is something that you definitely do not see very often. This Jester is getting shot at. It's going to pick up a veteran C, gain a little bit of health, and move on to kill other things. There is a bomber also coming in. Hopefully between the two of those they can claim the expansion. And then we've got engineers coming in for a drop. That is going to claim that expansion for the north. Mech Marines calmly sniping off 
engineers that are coming in to build those mass extractor slots definitely need to take care of those guys before sending more engineers in. One of these artilleries could easily take care of these guys if they would just dispatch it, but uh, apparently those mech marines are just going to chill out right there and be worry-free. Purple is going to drop right over here. This engineer was killed off by this mech marine, and the mech marine is also going to score a second engineer kill, and then a mass extractor kill in all likelihood, unless this bomber gets put to use. Slight engagement on the front line. This uh, is probably not going to accomplish anything, and I have no idea why there are three Tech 1 point defense planned right there. That is both a terrible location for Tech 1 point defense and... In general, it is a bad idea to build Tech 1 point defense. Something you can do, though, if you are fronting with your ACU and you're keeping units away from the line of sight on your point defense. Brilliant job there with the Mantis, by the way, that is going to be able to claim that side base as long as he can get an engineer over there. Um, you can do a radar spoof. You can build five wall sections organized exactly like this. There will not actually be a point defense and it's only a handful of mass to build one of those but you can distract your opponent force them into wasting a ton of fire on a blip that they believe is a point defense and you can actually gain a pretty cool advantage that way something for you to think about especially if you're playing the backstabby ever so slick cyber faction because that is something that's right up their alley Bulletproof Bob going to bear down on Jukebox Hero. Jukebox does have the T2 upgrade on his ACU, and he's going to build a point defense. Seraphim point defense, it is a beam weapon, and it just rakes across T1 units. It's going to be redirected to fire at Bulletproof Bob, which honestly is kind of a waste because he could have killed a lot more artillery with that thing had he not targeted it at the ACU. The ACU is basically a meat shield at this point in the game. It is worth about 20 tanks, and it has a buttload of HP for the DPS that any Tech 1 unit or a couple of Tech 2 point events can throw at it. You can burn off a lot of potential aggression just by fronting with your ACU and yet another drop from the southern side. They are bound and determined to have this expansion. I don't think I've ever seen a fight this long without that expansion being claimed by one team or the other. Purple got his without too much struggle but Tolaris and Mr. Zion are just duking it out over here. We've got two Mantis and a Medusa coming in that is easily going to kill off all of these engineers again unless that point defense can come up and I don't think it is because this Medusa is easily, is easily going to kill off all of these engineers with a shot. Yeah, there we go. And that is that. Looking back around this base, Pink is getting very brave. The Wet Cigarette has a very uh, no, that is completely unupgraded. I was about to say very unupgraded because I thought he might have gun, but he does not. He is completely vulnerable out there. He needs to get his ACU back. He is doing well on health, but you just don't want to get tangled up in a bunch of T1 units, especially when you have a stream coming in like this. Jukebox Hero did go for the spam option. He is getting his upgrades, though. He does have three Tech 2 Mass Extractors so far and is probably, yeah, four right over there. So he is doing very well for himself. I'm going to throw down some T2 point defense there for a protective perimeter and set up camp. Down here on the right-hand side, we do have a challenge for this expansion, but I don't think there is enough there to actually take it. Dumpling is sending a handful of Tech 1 tanks, but we've got three factories producing and a Tech 1 point defense. Yeah, that invasion is pretty much doomed before it even began. Here we have anti-air just pounding away at these interceptors that are just casually left out to die. Need to withdraw those unless they're actually doing something useful. Looking at our air players here, Bulldog is pretty far behind most of his team because he did not get any expansions. He's basically teching on 4 mexes, which takes a long time. Five mexes, excuse me. On the northern side, we have the same thing going on for Z the Zekio. Did he? I don't remember that name when I first started. Zekio. Interesting. 
I would like to know the origination of that name. He is already moving on to T3 mass extractor upgrades, and he is still on a Tech 1 power grid. Very interesting. I'm not sure how wise of a choice that is. He is going to end up relying on his team for power at some point. I just hope it is not a bad point. This map is very heavily influenced by early T3 air. If you can get a strat bomber out relatively early in the game before the opposing team really has an answer to it, you can potentially kill most of the mass extractors on the other team if you micro your bomber well. And so your air player really does not need to be lollygagging around um, when he could be building T3 air. And we're going to see a T2 gen go down. Zekio is definitely ahead of the southern team's air. Southern team is power stalling hard. Let's go look over here. That is a good sign that the RAS upgrade is in, product, in, in progression. I cannot talk right now. It is going down on one T2 power generator, which if you had a bunch of overflow from your team would not be a good big deal, but this guy does not have overflow, so that's going to be a long time coming, that resource allocation upgrade right there. Tech 1 bombers zipping across here, probably going to lay down some fire on that engineer. No. Wow. Was that a ground fire or was that a total malfunction of the targeting computer? I know not which. I did not see a red mark on the ground, but uh, that was that was bad. Die in my hands is going to throw down a land factory on the front, probably to build engineers. I would think. Yes, he is. And it looks like the game has finally reached a stalemate. There was a lot of action in that early game. We're going to see a progression of tech here. I think there's going to be a little bit of a stall until the first T3 air comes online for one team or the other. Purple, uh, that is slick, has definitely got the upper hand in the southern end. Dumpling has been going all out eco. You can see that he has roughly double the income of slick. So, what is apparently an advantage in both map control and unit count for Slick is quickly going to evaporate once Dumpling shifts to full production. And it looks like he is point defense creeping, as is the northern side. This hurts my soul. It's so sad to see why are both sides point defense creeping. When there is so much potential in mobile units, it just makes me sad. But... Here we do have a Tech 2 tank. That pillar is going to make a little progress towards the base, but I think there is more than sufficient amount of T1 to deny that little incursion. Got a Tech 1 bomber moving across, a transport moving to the front. I don't know if that was on a move queue from the factory. Possibly, yes, probably, it is going to go back, throwing away these interceptors into a hopeless air battle. And, yeah, that's not going to work out for you, bud. A point defense war versus a Seraphim opponent backed up by a UEF Sparky. That is not going to end well because the Cybern cannot win a point defense war against any other faction unless they are heavily backed up by Vipers. Because, let's face it, Vipers just rape everything. Vipers are just ridiculous basically once you see vipers on the field you need to kick up your uh, tech one spam a notch and just completely forget about any kind of stationary defenses because it just doesn't work it, it it's not going to this is a little cool idea here though we do have a mobile stealth generator i don't know why he's building a stationary stealth generator as well mobile stealth will work just fine but then an equally good idea air scouts from Tolaris, when was the last time you saw that? A front player is building his own scouts and air and taking care of himself. He is going to get that scout across, going to mark the position of everything right here. And yes, Zion does have 47 eco. Let's see here. Tolaris has 29. So yeah, 1.5 times the eco, roughly. 
And we are seeing a Viper at the front here, and Vipers are in production. Going to see some build power being produced up here. This Hive is going to assist the ACU in whatever it needs to do, or the shield to help keep the shield up. And yeah, this may actually work out for Zion. On the southern side, we're seeing a big push, and Slick's dead. Oh my goodness. There is no way that a vet's going to help him there. Why was he running forward? I am ashamed that I was not observing that. I see air, I see Tech 1 bomber harassment, and I see a swarm of units from two players. That was a double team because everything is static in the front. And guys, this is why static defense kills. You can see that blue and pink, that is wet cigarette and bulletproof bob, have a very good eco and both of them have plenty of build power the problem is they don't have any mobile combat units other than a teensy tiny handful of tech one tanks and this is what the other team has built so all of these point defenses the acus everything else in the middle is basically useless because all of the tanks went around the edge and T2 bombers, Corsairs, uh, those were being stock. <clears throat> excuse me, those were being stockpiled, I'm assuming for a snipe, but they were forced into service by that collapse of the other side and were just eliminated by all of these interceptors from here. We do have a huge air presence from the northern side. All of those interceptors available to deny pretty much anything that the southern team tries and now we have units in the base. Wet Cigarette is in danger now, but he does have a T3 air factory pumping out whalers. Is there any flak? I see none. As long as he can keep that whaler alive, building a couple of stationary anti-air or something to deal with all those interceptors. Ah, T3 units on the field for Bulletproof Bob as well. The interceptors are going to kill that gunship, but the Titans are going to be able to deny that tech to push finally so that is going to be halted more titans coming out i know titans don't pack in a lot of dps but they do fare well against tech one and tech two units just don't pit them against tech three please Talaris, what is he doing he is running directly in is he suiciding i think he is Apparently he decided that life was not worth living, so he's going to walk directly up to Zion's commander, and boom! Perhaps he was upset about the southern team, or, or the southern side collapsing. Although, uh, that makes me very sad because this was recovered, and that leads to a ton of reclaim. And a pretty good chance at regaining your footing. But now we're another player down. And a Monkey Lord has been finished. I wish he would have waited. That is... That that was a very bad choice to suicide like that. As to the desync window, I did get one of the guys in this game to rewatch the replay. That was the only desync in the game. And the game continued as normal with no changes. So there are no worries as to the quality of this game. Engineers being dropped by Jukebox Hero to try and get a little bit of this reclaim snatched up. Those are immediately going to be stomped out by this Whaler. Whalers are awesome gunships, very underutilized. I gotta admit, I rarely build them myself because I play in the big team games. A lot of times I play sentence, and you know what? Strap bombers work better in a lot of situations, but. On a map like this, where you need to harass, you are dealing with a bunch of ground units and you need to be able to deal out huge amounts of damage quickly to varying low health targets, you cannot beat the Whaler. It is just a great gunship. Got this Monkey Lord moving up towards the middle and honestly there is nothing up here that will be able to stop it unless two ACUs gang up on it together and overcharge it to death. Got some Rhinos moving up on the left hand side that is going to clean out this expansion and cause a lot of problems for the southern team who is trying to regain that mass. Apparently it was not the only desync, but I do have the actual file that the guy reviewed, so hopefully everything is still fine. We've got the Monkey Lord moving up through the mid. We've got the move order placed directly over top of the ACU. 
So we are going to see an engagement. Whalers trying to deal with these rhinos. Rhinos making it back towards the base a little bit, but not too terribly much. Air engagement on the northern side, which is going to be won by the northern team in their home base. Why do you have two quantum gateways? I don't know, because you only have 172 mass income. That was a fairly large waste of mass. Could have assisted one and had about the same amount of build power. I don't think the northern side has a T4. They do not. But they do have two ACUs right together. Do not run. That is the wrong choice. Start overcharging. That is what you need to do. There we go. Jukebox Hero throwing up another shield that they can retreat into. T2 point defense doing a whole lot of hurt. No. There is an ACU death. Jukebox Hero is going to casually overcharge that Monkey Lord to death. Saving himself with about 2200 health. That Monkey Lord is now a mass donation, but the Northern team is short, one ACU. And this cheeky little bastard of a Rhino back here is still plugging away. It is going to successfully take down a mass storage. Well done, my good sir, but you're sitting inside the attack range of an upgrading ACU. Not the most intelligent thing on the face of planet Earth to do. Still using Jesters at 21 minutes into the game. We have T3 air and T1 gunships on the field at the same time. When was the last time you saw that, guys? Got another Monkey Lord headed up to the north to take care of this Tech 2 army. And then we have a Fat Boy in production. Bulletproof Bob does have 114 eco, which is not a tremendous amount, but it is enough to rip out a Fat Boy. That sounds like a bad joke about gas. We need... Uh, probably need to shut down that T3 factory and finish the fat boy off quicker. I uh, think that would be a more efficient way to do things. And yes, he is reclaiming. So well done to you, my good sir. We have two players with T3 air, as before mentioned, and both of them are making ASF. So it looks like, although the interceptor battle was won by the northern side, it looks like there is a T3 air advantage to the south as long as they don't do exactly what they're doing now, which is separate their air forces and get tangled up in a bunch of interceptors. That is what you do not want to do. Interceptors do actually have a surprising amount of firepower. You need to stay away from them, engage from the rear, and make absolutely sure that you wipe out as many as possible in the first pass so that the interceptors do not successfully bring their weight of fire to bear on your own air units and another rhino slipping through there is a repeating theme here apparently rhinos are super effective but i get the distinct feeling that we are about to see another violent acu death via nuclear annihilation only the monkey lord decided to stop for some unknown reason it is just going to chill out right there and uh, t2 point defense are going to continue to go down Although I'm not sure why T2 point defense was the weapon of choice and why this ACU was not running. Ugh, oh, so sad to watch. Cybering T2 point defense is pitifully weak, and the Monkey Lord is going to vet on all of these T2 units. Laser coming to bear on Mr. Zion. Zion is dead meat. That was a bad choice. You can pick your battle when the opponent lets his T4 sit still for an extended period of time. But instead, he's just going to let that Monkey Lord stomp all over his face and then ram its gun down his throat in a violent act. So, uh, yeah, that is the end of the left-hand defense. We're down two players on each team, but the southern players have had a little more time to recoup while there is a fresh loss for the northern team. There's a Galactic Colossus going down. And there is a very large group of Percivals and accompanying units on the southern side. Problem is, they kind of need that on the north. And we do have a T3 air factory here as well. There were some strat bombers. There are a couple of strat bombers, which are rapidly being decimated by all of these ASF that are everywhere. And the Monkey Lord is down. Well... There are not really a whole lot of combat units anywhere near that, so somebody needs to transport some engineers out there ASAP to snag that mass. I think this mass is going to have a fairly large impact on how the next few minutes of the game go. We've got whalers coming out, trying to push back against these Percivals. 
and I am not sure why my voice is breaking up tonight. There is no good reason for it to, but apparently that is what it's doing. Fat Boy is not close enough to finish, and I don't think it will get finished. Percivals are simply going to close range and kill it before its shield goes up. Sad day in the UEF base. There is a mon uh, not a monkey lord, a megalith that is also about to come online, but I think it is also going to get killed off before it can. There goes the fat boy. And these Percivals and Pillars and various and sundry other units are going to proceed to wash over this base and eliminate it. There's a Whaler trying to make a difference right here, and it is doing a pretty dang good job of it, considering the fact that the Northern team completely forgot to include Flak. The air advantage is real for the Southern team. Lots more ASF than the North. Problem is, they need ground control. Wet Cigarette engaging directly with his ACU, trying to buy some time for that Megalith to come online, but it is an unfortunate circumstance because the Cybern ACU is paper. It looks like he does have the gun upgrade, so he is able to lay down a significant amount of damage on that. Bulletproof Bob fronting with his ACU. He's going to draw some fire, but Percival's laying down so much hurt per shot. There goes Bulletproof. Veterancy going down for Wet Cigarette. A lot of the units eliminated, but the dangerous ones are still here. The Percival's are firing on that ACU. I think we're about to see another nuke. Two shots and a dodge and boom. Very nice micro there, but unfortunately it was not enough. We've got an ACU drop here. This is an SACU actually. That is a Rambo Com. And that is going to be the end of the Southern team, I think. And boom, we have a Control K. That is the end of it all. Well, guys, very interesting game. I It, it makes my heart sad that this guy quit up here. Um, that is case in point why you never, ever quit without first looking at all of the details. I know that you can get enraged, and I know that you can think that things are going south, but you have to look, because if your team has a T4 90% complete, and you're completely secure in your side, and you decide to just suicide, I... I really believe that this guy threw the game for the Southern team. I think they could have made it. Uh, they actually came close to making it anyway um, with the with those snipes with the Monkey Lord. So awesome effort. Way to go for sticking with it on the Southern side. But the Northern team eventually did prevail. The only other thing I'm going to say is when you have limited resources like you do have in the back slots on a map like this where you're limited to... Uh, let's say six to eight, maybe nine mass extractors. You don't want to double up on expensive structures. I did not say enough about this earlier. You want to build one and assist with any other build power that you have because this building is very, very expensive and it does not have much build power. You're strictly paying for the ability to build SACUs, so you're far better off building engineers to assist your existing quantum gateway and not building a second one. That, uh, that will get you a lot further along because you'll have more mass to invest into other things. Alrighty guys, that is my game on the pyramids. As I always say, I need your replays and I would love to have some interesting replays on varied maps. Not necessarily the same ones over and over again. I love 5 vs 5 Pyramid, but I think I've about seen enough of it for a while. Let's see some games on White Fire. Let's see some games on Cauldron. Other cool little maps that we don't see much. Why don't you go pick a new map, get some friends together, and experiment. Play a game. Send it over to me if you have a good time. It's always fun to learn maps. So engage and do new things. That's what makes the experience fun. Alrighty, I'm going to wrap up this video there. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will see you a little later in the week.